Today, I thought we'd talk about the quantum synthetic hologram, sometimes known as jump rooms. I kind of want to elaborate that and tie it into a few different videos we've done. Um, it's going to be hard that it's a kind of advanced and difficult topic to condense into a time frame and make it to where people can just understand it, at least where my research is with it. So we're going to give it a shot and see. I haven't been around in a while, so we're going to see if we can make this work or not. Yo! Salutations. Today, let's talk about the quantum synthetic hologram, all right? The quantum synthetic hologram, what's often called jump rooms also. I've heard whistleblowers call it that. So we're going to take that and really kind of break that down into what is that and what is it like to go through and maybe encounter that phenomenon, all right? Um, for starters, let's start looking at this quantum synthetic environment, not so much as a, like a holodeck on Star Trek, but more as an energetic environment, as an organic um, structure itself, all right? And in that way, that's gonna take us a little deeper into some other things that aren't just called nanotechnology. We've already dealt with that a little bit, but it's gonna take us more into what's called pico science, all right, which is actually, what if you remember the movie Transformers, how when they were the, the very last one, I think that the Decepticons were breaking into like this type of nano dust, and then they would reform at other places, uh, reassemble themselves. So that's dealing with the type of computer system that would actually be able to structure nanomaterial like that, all right? So that's um, actually Pico science and Pico technology. So I advise everybody to kind of look into that a little bit. But that kind of ties into something that I heard from the free organization, the Foundation for Research and Extraterrestrial Encounters, uh, Dr. Mitchell uh, Foundation, founded by Ray Hernandez. He actually wrote a paper called the Quantum Holographic Theory of Consciousness. Let's kind of tie that into uh, this whole perception of the quantum synthetic hologram. Taking the quantum synthetic hologram from the macro to the micro, all right? And in the macro, we think of something like a hologram, a holodeck, like on Star Trek, but making this miniature in the micro, all right? Let's take this to what this quantum theory of conscious, holographic consciousness is saying, all right? They're actually right now saying that the quantum hologram itself, I advise anybody to go back on this channel and look at the video we did over the quantum hologram and UFO phenomenon, but actually taking the quantum hologram itself and being able, it's attaching it to the atom itself. All right, that's taking this down to a whole nother principle when we're dealing with nanotech and what we just called Pico technology, all right? So actually what we have is, let's say, an orb, all right, an organic energetic environment, a small orb that is put uh, through po perhaps time travel technology that we've talked about, all right, being placed into a place like here on Earth or Mars, all right, and taking a um, holographic image of it, recording everything to create what is called a, a holographic, artificial holographic planetary domain. That is uh, actually making within this orb, everything is recorded in that way, all right, and then subjecting a person like us to that, all right? And in that way, that would be an orb, perhaps simply as an orb being around us. But in that way, we would be perceiving the information coming from this quantum hologram. All right, I think this is very, very important to emphasize that if we're dealing with civilization type two, type three, that can take this holographic technology, virtual reality scenario technology, and attach to us at the molecular uh, area, at, at the molecular, uh, uh, I'm sorry, level, all right? That's very serious. And in that way, let's also think about the dream body, the astral body, and the physical body. We've talked a lot about, about bilocation. Another video on this channel, please check it out. Bilocation during the UFO phenomenon. Being separated, your energy body, your astral body, your dream body being separated from the physical body during the encounter, all right? That is a very similar situation we're talking about now, and that would technically be quantum entanglement. How protons are able to discern each other from ever so much amount of distance, that's the same thing. We're dealing with a technology that is interacting with our quantum entanglement. These are things that can be looked up, all right? 
Um, in a situation thinking about this type of a quantum synthetic environment, I want people maybe to think about uh, the Zimbabwe children. Children, Ooh, Zimbabwe children. All right, they actually um, said that they saw a UFO. Then something looked like a gray that was telling them, uh, "Please take care of the, the planet." All right, stop hurting the planet. But later, those children are now in their 30s. All right, but some of them remember now seeing instead of a gray, seeing and a ship, seeing orbs. All right. Certain remote viewers, I think with, was it Ed Dame, SciTech, one of them were trying to look at that situation and they saw orbs around these children as well. So that's that kind of technology we're talking about, quantum synthetic environments. And I'm not one to judge, but my experience is I didn't go to Mars, I wasn't seeing that, all right. But so many of these whistleblowers that were, were they exposed to a quantum synthetic holographic technology. If they were, and it was that separation, that bilocation, they wouldn't even know it. All right. So that's maybe what we need to look at, at some of these people that say they went to Mars and been to all these different places during these experiences, because a lot of the UFO experiment exper experience, the contact experience itself, I'll tell you, a lot of other real experiencers will tell you it's fragmented. Even if you, especially if you're missing time, it's fragmented. So just to save there for hours, you're experiencing this and that, is uh, that maybe implies a different type of technology, a lower vibration entities maybe. Anyway, we'll continue. So we're gonna call this part three. I'm trying desperately to condense this in a format that makes some type of a sense without losing everybody's attention. All right, back to the quantum synthetic hologram. Also remember this orb, this orb type of an energetic environment could actually actually produce what's called particle synthesis which would give us a feeling of heat, cold, also sound. That's going to be that much more that actually deceives us in what we're perceiving there, all right? Um, I think um, another thing to kind of, we'll go over real quick again, what the quantum hologram actually is to my understanding, all right? Which is when you have actually um, a, a wormhole, all right? You have that aperture actually, when something goes through the wormhole, it creates a copy on the surface of the wormhole, an exact copy, while the other thing actually proceeds through. So that thing, that copy, is the quantum hologram. All right, that's my understanding of it. And so far, when I talked to Ray, he has agree with that agreement with that to a certain degree. So that's that's kind of cool. But anyway, if we're dealing with that on actually the molecular level, it changes everything. So how much of what we're seeing is a hologram and actually the abduction phenomenon itself or the contact phenomenon itself, all right? We have a lot of beings that have come through these wormholes just to get here, but they may no longer exist, but they still exist in the quantum hologram, all right? Able to still communicate with us and maybe even be thought forms that take on forms in our atmosphere here once they come out of that, that hologram itself. That needs to be really thought about and examined when we're dealing with potential contact from civilizations that are type 2 and type 3, okay, so far advanced of us that they may not even be in existence no more anymore, all right? There's a lot of theories concerning that, but they would still exist in the quantum hologram. For all that we know, our creator, the source of the universe, comes through some type of a wormhole, so when we see the Hubble telescope, and we're actually looking through that and see the Hubble deep field, excuse me, we're actually seeing the quantum hologram, not really the melanin out there, the dark matter out there, and what's really out there, and much, much of creation. So that's just something to kind of put into context. I want people to think of about this when dealing with the contact phenomenon, all right? The possible that these are quantum synthetic environments, that a lot of the orbs we're seeing is that type of a technology on a micro level, on, an, on a pico scale, what's called the pico scale. So that's about all I can say. Please uh, put a like on this. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos. I appreciate everybody overseas that's watching. I'm seeing a lot of people in Denmark and other places. It's Israel. It's really, really pretty cool. So thank you very much. for Please subscribe and put a like on it and um, make some comments. I'm, I'm behind on comments. I'll try to respond. Uh, God bless. Much power and energy.